Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Friday, March 15th, 2024. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. This week, the Ministry of Human Resources conducted question and answer exercises with permanent secretaries, heads, managers, and supervisors of departments and offices in the Nevis Island Administration in order to inform them of the new performance appraisal and performance management policy instrument, which will soon be implemented. The permanent secretary in the Ministry of Human Resources is Kevin Barrett. One of the things that we recognize at the Ministry of Human Resources is the numerous um, feedback and, and complaints, if I could put it like that, that we would have gotten over an extended period of time with the um, current staff report form that is being used throughout the, throughout the system. And we found that there were some inadequacies. One of, of, of those um, which um, really struck us is the nature in which it was constructed and also the areas that were looked at um, at the farms. And one of the complaints that we got from persons who were filling out these farms is that sometimes it did not capture the true essence of the workers that they had to appraise. And so we took all of those things into consideration and we have come up with something I, um, that I believe is, is more comprehensive. Barrett expresses gratitude to Shadola Gill, Shelley Lybird, and Carissa Griffin of the Ministry of Human Resources for formulating the policy, noting that he is looking forward to the execution of it. We are happy uh, at this point that we have had the, the meetings and all of what we would have done um, over the past few days and the feedback that we would have gotten. We are looking forward to the execution of this um, appraisal form and the performance management policy. And we know that it is going to be something that is going to help us in the execution of the appraisals that governs the, the whole of the NIA um, system. We are very, very um, happy that we are at this point. Um, I think it's, it's, it's really important that we, from time to time, we look at what we do and assess what we do and make changes. And this is one of the changes that we are looking forward to that would help us in the execution of our duties. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Human Resources, Kevin Barrett. Adela Francis Mead says she is grateful to the Nevis Renal Society for the support the organization offers to her and other kidney disease patients on the island. Mead, who is also a member of the Nevis Renal Society, shared her story in a recent interview with Sheila James of the Health Promotion Unit. I am from the Nevis area, mm -hmm. and dialysis is in Nevis, so you have so to go have to, to St. Kitts. So we take the ferry. Right. Um, the other patients, the other seven, it's, um, it's, they go for the three sessions per week. Mm -hmm. But I go for two sessions. Okay. So I go for two sessions. I go for on, on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And um, you take the ferry. Now, the, I mentioned the assistance from the <coughs> the renal society mm -hmm. that helps helps a long way you know whatever you choose to do whether it's lab or medical transportation now in terms of the assistance from the government to mm. the our, our permanent secretary is black and who is there has been very supportive and so um, the ferry, you don't have to pay for our ferry. Or the ferry is being taken care of. Oh, very good, very good. Uh, transportation was provided by, uh, uh, when we go to Hawaii, mm -hmm. from Reggae Beach. In that interview, medical practitioner Dr. Glenville Leibert advised the general public of the signs and symptoms of chronic kidney disease. Swollen feet and hands and puffy face and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, and just being compared because it's anemic as well. And just so, just feeling lethargic, you know, just not feel right. Yeah. But I always tell patients, don't wait to get symptoms. Mm. We have lots of doctors and nurses. 
The deepest Reno Society is observing World Kidney Day March 14th with a week of awareness activities, including inviting persons to become members of the organization. If you have a caring heart and you care about persons who suffer with kidney disease, you should become a member because you just never know if it will be you, a family member, a mm. friend, or someone mm. else. And we are living in a society where there are two diseases, um, yeah, non communicable diseases, yeah. that affect and can, you know, that have adverse effects on the kidneys, as high blood pressure and diabetes. And those two are rampant in Nevis and I must say across the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so if you know someone with diabetes or high blood pressure, then you need to become a member of the society. Treasurer of the Nevis Renal Society, Alexa Pemberton. Still to come, St. Kitts and Nevis needs CARICOM in Human Development UNDP report reveals the details after this break. Celebrating culture, embracing our history, is Culturama 50, July 25th to August 6th. It's the Caribbean's greatest summer line. See you there. Welcome back. Urologist Dr. Dwayne Thwaites is imploring men on Nevis to get early screenings for prostate cancer as the symptoms cannot be detected in the early stages. Dr. Thwaites was speaking during an interview with the Department of Information on Thursday, March 14th. Um, prostate cancer is very prevalent in the black population. We're considered to be a high-risk group and um, it's uh, four, four times more prevalent in the black population than in the Caucasian population. And so we are in a high risk community. Um, the last um, World Health Organization data has shown that prostate cancer is in epidemic proportion in the Caribbean itself. And we're just glad um, to be here to help. If we pick it up early, the cure rate is absolutely excellent, about 95% cure rate. And that's why we screen. We screen for prostate cancer because we know if we pick it up early, we can treat persons for the cancer and we can at least cure them at the early stage. Um, one of the big things for the population to understand, early stage prostate cancer has no symptoms, none, nunca, nada. And when one begins to have symptoms from prostate cancer, it's already too late and our treatment modalities are almost uh, non-existent for late-stage prostate cancer. Dr. Thwaites, along with four other doctors, will host a free prostate screening clinic on Saturday, March 16th, 2024, at the Occasions Entertainment Center. According to Dr. Thwaites, the screenings have been taking place for the past 17 years, and the turnout has been commendable. The t turnout has been remarkable. In, um, in Nevis, um, I'm amazed that the population comes out. When we look at a population of 10 to 12,000 people and we're getting close to eight to 900 people coming out for, for screening, it, it speaks volume for that. Last year we had um, 726, um, which has decreased from um, years, previous years. And again, we were just um, coming out from the, the, the COVID um, but uh, yes, we, we do get a tremendous amount of, um, of people coming out to, for the prostate screening and I'm, I'm just happy and the guys are glad to be here to assist. It's usually a very tiring day for all of us, but um, we managed to get through and I'm, I'm appreciative of the support from the, the population of Nevis. Registration will begin promptly at 6 a.m.
St. Kitts and Nevis is the highest ranked CARICOM country in the 2023-2024 Human Development Report. Released by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, on Wednesday under the title Breaking the Gridlock, Reimagining Cooperation in a Polarized World, the report highlights a country's gross national income per capita education and life expectancy. According to the report, St. Kitts and Nevis emerged as the highest-ranked CARICOM country, securing the 51st position among 193 nations surveyed. Meantime, the UNDP's findings spotlight the challenges faced by Latin America and the Caribbean region, particularly noting the significant drop in Human Development Index during 2020 to 2021. The report emphasizes the need for social protection and resilience building efforts to mitigate the impacts of such crises on human development trajectories. The report calls for leveraging collective capacities to confront shared challenges and ensure equitable development for all, stressing that failure to do so not only hinders human development but also exacerbates polarization and erodes trust in institutions. By prioritizing international cooperation and addressing systemic inequalities, the report advocates for a renewed commitment to advancing human development and fostering inclusive societies worldwide. And that's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing.